All righty, so you find yourself in San Sebastian. You've heard about Casa Julian, the great steak place that's right outside of town, and you're wondering how you're gonna get there. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go, um, we're gonna help you get there from San Sebastian via train, which we do highly recommend, um, how to get out there, what stop to take. We're gonna go eat there, try out some of their stuff, have a little sit down with the owner, um, maybe have some extra uh, things thrown in there that you might enjoy while you're waiting for your reservation. Casa Julian is definitely one of the places you need to go when you're coming and check out uh, the San Sebastian area. Um, it's in a little town called Tolosa. So without further ado, here we go. For you, we'd show you how to get from San Sebastian de Nostia out to Casa Julian out in Tolosa. So, if you look behind me here, what we've got is the Maria Cristina Bridge, and that is the third bridge on the river here. Iconic bridge here in San Sebastian is actually going to be that one behind us. Yes. yes. So, if you'll turn around and look this way, what you'll see is the Maria Cristina train station or the main train station and bus station here in San Sebastian. Okay. So what you've got to do is you, we're going to go right in there and we are going to show you exactly how to get from here in Donostia San Sebastian out to Tolosa where Casa Julian is at. So this is also where all the taxis stop here uh, at the train station, bus station. Remember here in, in Donostia San Sebastian, you're not allowed to hail a cab on the street. You actually have to go to a cab stop or your hotel will call you one uh, to come up and pick you up at your hotel. But you cannot just hail a cab here. So we're gonna go in here, show you guys how the uh, the ticket buying process works. So my lovely assistant, Sandra, is gonna show you guys exactly how to do this. So you wanna choose Renfe Cercanias. So you wanna choose the Renfe Cercanias, which means basically the close ones. You can change their language right down there at the bottom to English if you need to, okay? So go. what you wanna do is you wanna do a return and you wanna to go to Tolosa. Not Tolosa Centro, Tolosa. but Tolosa. Yes, Tolosa, not Tolosa Centro, just they, Tolosa. Right, and so then you got, will choose whatever amount of tickets. How many tickets you want to get? Whatever. All right. Uh, we want to do that. Okay, from there, if you came with cash, you will go ahead and introduce your bill right here, okay, or your coins over here. If you want to pay with a card, with a Visa or MasterCard, then it's the moment to introduce your card in this and just follow your uh, instructions here on the pad, okay? Mm -hmm. And then for and the ticket, we'll spit it out right, right down there. Exactly. So then, in. what you're going to do, and again, there's a website. We're going to link the website or the uh, app actually down there. We're looking for the red. It's typically going to be red. Um, and we're going to do that. Uh, one Brincola is the one we're going to take. Um, sometimes they do have direct ones to Tolosa as well, um, but. You can just kind of look on the app and you'll see the time. You just kind of match the time up there on the red and it will tell you which track you should go on, whether it be two or four. It's going to be track four for the one we're doing, but a lot of times it's track two. Track two would be the ones that are direct a lot of times. Um, and then you would come over here and what you would do is you would insert your ticket into this red slot right here. Wait for the gates to open. Uh, you go through and you go downstairs and I'll show you that whole process. So make sure once you come in that you stay in, you're ready to stay in. So we would go downstairs. Of course, there are elevators if you need them. Go over here. Now the, uh, the direct two Tolosa ones normally, and again, I always say normally because you never are hundred percent sure, but normally the direct two Tolosa ones uh, will leave from here. For us, we're gonna to go today, because ours is gonna pick us up on track four. So what we're gonna do is wait for our train, and then we'll show you from there. 
So these trains here, um, the commuter trains are quite different from the high-speed trains. And we will go on here. And there's my lovely assistant there. So once the train leaves the station here, you're going to have 11 stops. Okay, you're going to get off at the 11th stop. Okay, uh, that will be Tolosa. Okay, when we get to this train station here, we want to start paying attention. It's called Anoeta. Right? And what we got to start watching is, we've got to watch that sign right there. We want to get off at this next stop, the second, second, number two, Tolosa stop. That's the one we want to get off of. So at this point, right before you get off the train, you need to have your ticket in your hand. Even if somebody's come by to check your ticket, which they do occasionally do, uh, we want to have, make sure we have our ticket in our hand because we're going to need that to get out of the train station. So there's our stop. Tolosa. Or Tolosa. So we're going through. And all you do is just like you had to do before you get onto the train, is you will insert your card right into that slot right there and wait for the gates to open just like this. And on we go. I do highly recommend coming up here and uh, checking this town out a little bit prior to your reservation because it's a very nice little town. It's definitely off the path, I would say. Um, so it's worthwhile to come up here and spend a few hours at least checking this beautiful town out. It's got a lot of old history. So what we're doing is we are making our way to the left. Make you guys go right to the main road. It's called Calle San Francisco. Calle San Francisco. That's the main road that was just a little. So we're going to go from Calle San Francisco, or to Calle San Francisco. And then from there, we're going to go to the bar. From there, we're going to go show you a great place to have a wonderful little drink. And then from there, to Casa Julian. So here is the main boulevard. And again, whenever you've got a crossing like this, the pedestrians have the right of way, but you do have to show intent. Um, act like you're going to cross, but make sure you're, the car sees you. Yeah. So right here where it says Ross, we're going to turn to the right. And there's a nice big candy shop on the corner called Chucky. And right over there is Bar Dickens. So folks, we're uh, we're on our way to Casa Julian right now, and I wanted to stop by Bar Dickens here, right right here in Tolosa. So if you guys are coming into this area and waiting for your table at Casa Julian, I highly recommend coming here and trying one of these vermouths because they are absolutely amazing. So I'm going to grab a little bit of video of him making one just so you can see what it's all about.
So Bar Dickens is just around the corner from Casa Julian. And I definitely recommend coming here and getting the, uh, the vermouth. And now we are on our way to Casa Julian. So we are now crossing the bridge back over towards the other side of the river. Got the old town of Tolosa behind us. And there's a little parking if you do decide to drive and we'll give you the exit for that on here. But I highly recommend that you take the train because you're probably gonna have a couple of adult beverages it's always better to ride the train. You get to see a lot more and just a little more relaxed. So today, as you can see behind us, we're at Casa Julian in Tolosa. In Tolosa. Um, we're going to go check this out, give you guys a review. We've got a great interview set up with the owner, to, with Shabi. Um, we're going to go talk to him and find out a little bit more about the restaurant and his family and kind of where he's from. The origins. Origins. The, the type specialties. Of meats, the the yes. specialties. We're going to cover uh, it all. We're going to do a nice review of this after the interview. Uh, we're going to have our meal, of course, which is going to be great, I'm sure. Okay, so our first dish in Casa Julian are typical Navarra, Navarra, Navarra. White asparagus, as you can see, they are super thick. So the thicker, the better product. And they have brought some type of uh, some type of uh, vinegar sauce. I can smell the vinegar. And definitely, there is oil in there. So I'm just okay. gonna pour it on top of the asparagus. Yep. Looks like red wine, vinegar, and oil. Yep, yep, that's what I'm thinking. Looks yummy. So that's our first dish. 
that we're going to enjoy. And we're having a little, uh, what do they call this small bottle? It's like a half bottle. Okay, they call it a half bottle? Yes. Now, how would you, ca how would you call that in Spanish? Uh, media botella. Media botella. I should have figured that one out. It's not very difficult. It is difficult for my small mind, though. Okay. But media botella, you guys can get that as well. Um, and we're getting more of the classic style menu here. So here's our second course. We've got some... Uh, Cojollos de Tudela. Cojollos de Tudela. Cojollos de Tudela. Tudela. Tudela is a town in Navarra, and Cojollo is a small lettuce. Okay, so they're little tiny heads of lettuce that have been split in half. They've got uh, black salt on there, and that salt... The reason it's black is probably because it has squid ink in it. I'm just guessing because they use that a lot here. And it's these tiny little heads of lettuce with the nice olive oil um, and the black salt. So very, very yummy, very tasty, very simple that you will find here when you come visit the Basque And very Navarra. And very much from Navarra. Very good. The, um, the identity of the first owner of Casa Julian. So I get the bone side and she gets the meat side. I think we should have reversed that, if you know what I mean. That's probably a PG-13 there. Perfecto. So there's our uh, peppers. Go ahead. Those are peppers? Again. Those are peppers. All the, every one of the side dishes in this meal are so authentically Navarro. Okay. So we've got a lot of background noise going on, as you can tell. So hopefully we can hear all this. Uh, but just to give you guys an idea, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but we did not get the 55 euro steak. It's 55 euro per kilo. We went and opted because today they do have uh, availability for ox meat, okay, which is the more traditional old school steaks that they used to do apparently. Um, and they're going to start raising their own for meat, their own oxen. Okay, So that's what we got right here. Uh, we got a smaller one. Uh, they were 85 euro a kilo. Um, and we got, I don't know, a little bit less than a kilo. We didn't feel like eating that much. Um, and these peppers are absolutely amazing. We were here six years ago, Sunday, mm -hmm. um, when our first restaurant we ever ate at was right here. So we're rel reliving some memories. Are you recording? Did you push record? Is it showing up top? Is it recording? Are you sure? We'll have nine seconds. So this is your first time. Bitty recording anything. Yeah, true, true, true. So uh, for once, is, you're gonna sway the beginning. Hang on a moment. This is a uh, this is a momentous moment, I would say. <laughs> so here's to you. I'm gonna give my ox steak a try. I think it's probably the first time I've had real ox steak. Probably. So Not very. Um... It smells different. Um. So here we go. Nice and medium rare here. So what do you think? Flavor wise. Comparing to cow, that that's what we normally eat here. Not here in Basque country. How will you explain the difference? In flavor. It doesn't it doesn't taste like cow. It tastes like it's it's sweeter. Something it's, it's creamier. Yeah. It seems to be a little yeah. more creamy. Yeah. Um, in flavor. Even though this is not a milk cow, which they do use sometimes. Um, this is actually an oxen. So that's this is a plow animal. This is a draft animal that right. they use to to work the fields. And I guess when they get too old or they stop pulling their weight, they become Supper. There you go. But yes, this is uh, very good. Very good. I would have paid 85 for that. So here are these peppers, and we've already hit it a little bit there. Um, these things are... Candy. They are... Beautiful. Candy, I would 
you know, I guess that's the best word I can find right now. I would think yes. They uh, they they um, they do taste a lot like candy. They are amazingly good. Um, I'm watching out myself. I'm watching yourself. That's the beauty of vlogging with these types of rigs. Okay, we're shooting this on the Osmo Pocket. Bueno, este va a ser eh, las preguntas en inglés, obviamente, porque muchas de la, de la audiencia uh -huh. que tenemos es inglesa, y yo te las voy a traducir, tú contestas en castellano y yo lo traduzco en inglés, ¿vale? Awesome. Un poquito así. Oh. Cuando quieras. Ok. So first, thank you very much for allowing us to uh, take some of your time. I know you guys are really busy all the time, so thank you very much for giving us this opportunity for an interview. So first question is, um, are you originally from Tolosa? Yes, uh, sí. Sí, eres, eh, eres de Losa, ¿no? Sí, de Losa. Sí. De Losa Tarra de, de pura cepa. Toda la vida. Vale, muy bien. So, yes, sí, es from Tolosa. Um, next one is, uh, what, what is your role here at Casa Julián? O sea, ¿cuál es, cuál es, eh, ¿cómo has empezado en esto? O sea, ¿cómo, cuál, ¿qué te hizo meterte en, en la hostelería? Eh, uh, ¿Cuál es tu rol un poquito en Casa Julián? Cuéntanos un poquito tus a inicios. Ver, yo... Cuando nací yo, el año que yo nací, mis padres cogieron el restaurante. Yo al principio no era muy... Bueno, no sé, la época rebelde decía que yo no quería venir aquí, pero luego al final pues me di cuenta que no tenía un sitio mejor que estar que en casa. ¿no? Y pues ahora ya unos 20 años o así ya decidí ya centrarme un poquito aquí. Y nada, pues hoy en día pues me toca un poco lo que es la organización de todo. Vale. Eh, pues hasta hace muy poco pues estaba en la parrilla y me limitaba un poquito todo, pero bueno, ahora tengo que estar en muchas partes. Vale. So, what he basically what he's saying is that, you know, his parents acquired the restaurant the year that he was born. Okay. And that in the beginning he didn't have a lot of interest in this business obviously because he was a little bit like Mucho a child rebel. Yeah, sí, exactly. sí. And but little by little he understood that the best place to be was at home. Right. Okay, so about 20 years ago, he started to just really take this business seriously and he started doing a little bit of everything. He started in the grill and okay. then it slowly became a little bit of, uh, you know, administrator, manager, cooker, you know, a little bit, be actually everywhere. A jack okay? of all and, trades. Exactly, in the business. So okay. take a little bit over uh, right. the business a little bit. Your right. padres están retirados, me imagino. His parents are uh, retired. Okay, all right, great. So my next question is, um, with your uh, with your chuletas and peppers that, that this place is famous for, mm -hmm. um, how did that come about? How did it how did it become like the chuletas and the peppers? How did that? Ya se ha entendido, ¿no? O sea, cómo sí, ha sí. llegado a ser tan icono, ¿no? Lo de a la ver. chuleta y los pimientos que, es que todo el mundo Julián, conoce. Julián, él fue un pionero en todo. Él empezó pues, sobre 1951, vino aquí a Tolosa y, y él empezó a darle vueltas a todo. Él al final eh, era muy listo y, y bueno, él empezó con la carne. Él vio que le gustaba mucho, eh, tenía una parrilla aquí, empezó a investigar, empezó a poner y al final fue el primero en hacer una chuleta de buey. Aquí, al empezar a hacer el cambio de, la, de asar terneras a asar eh, animales eh, mayores, eh, tuvo que hacer ciertos cambios, pues porque en una parrilla plana no se podía asar bien porque tiene más grasa, más corto. Entonces, eh, inclinó la parrilla, en, o sea, cosas que ahora mismo están en, en la mayoría de sitios. El origen está aquí, en todos en Casa Julián, al final, eh, lo que son las chuletas, el corte es eh, típico aquí vasco, ¿no? Al final pero el que empezó un poco a darle origen a todo fue Julián. Entonces, esa es igual un poco la razón por la que aquí nosotros hemos querido mantener el menú único durante 70 años con ciertas aportaciones, pues platos de temporada, cosas pues así. Sí. Pero la chuleta y los pimientos vienen a dar pues por, por esta razón de la carne y los pimientos porque Julián era navarro. Entonces, claro, él... En, es que en mucho tiempo fue pionero en eso también. Él, él era Navarro, que se conocía el producto, pues tanto el espárrago como el pimiento de comerlo en casa. Y él fue el que dijo: ¿Por qué no vamos a dar esto en, en un restaurante? ¿no? Y empezó a dar un restaurante. Y claro, hoy en día, como el mejor acompañamiento que hay son los pimientos con los que están en la mayoría de sitios, también el origen viene de aquí. 
Vale, perfecto. What, so what he's saying is that Julian, which is the original uh, founder of Casa Julian, in about 1951, he, was, he came here and started practicing with the meat. He, he um, saw that the meat was really good in the Basque country. And that until then, they used to do, they used to work with younger animals, younger cattle. Like veals. And, exactly, okay. like veals. Uh -huh. And uh, he realized that that meat didn't go well in a flat grill. He was Navarran. He okay. was from, from Navarra. Navarra. Okay. So he used to eat at oh. home asparagus and peppers and all like that. So he figured, why don't serving, not serving those peppers and those asparagus in a restaurant? Okay. So that's basically how those um, side dishes came about. Because so basically homegrown food and homegrown recipes. Exactly. That was great at home. Exactly. And it's like, we've got to get this out to the world. So we start making this our thing at our restaurant. Exactly. Okay. That's, that's about that's it. That's the origin of everything that makes carne, the food, the food, the food, the food, the food, the food. Right. Very good. So next question is, um, with all the fame, the international fame that you guys are getting right now, how is that affecting your day-to-day -day operations? ¿Cómo se está afectando tanta notoriedad últimamente? Pues, la verdad es que nos están... ¿Cómo lo lleváis? ¿Cómo lo lleváis? Pues, como podemos, la verdad, porque con el personal es muy difícil. Eh, estamos continuamente renovando, intentando buscar de mayor calidad posible, pero es que llega un momento en el que ya no no llegas, no llegas, entonces bien, pero más trabajo, poco... sí, no, no, sí, no, no, estamos reduciendo un poco de cogiendo menos gente porque es que queremos dar un buen servicio, no coger, no, no tenemos ninguna necesidad, entonces eh, bien, o sea, siempre gusta que venga gente, pues ahora, por ejemplo el en principios de agosto salimos en un reportaje de la BBC. Ok. Uh -huh. Entonces, eh, o sea, ya yeah. te estamos trabajando mucho, o sea, right. ha sido multiplicarse. Y bueno, pues no queremos bajar los, quitar los pies del suelo y hay que saber que, bueno, que esto es temporal, que esto no es para siempre. Entonces, hay que mantener tanto a la gente que viene fuera como a los desde aquí. Entonces, hay que, hay que estar atento y hay que estar bien. No, Vale. So what he's saying is that uh, I mean they're very pleased, of course, yeah. uh, with the international, you know, notoriety that they have acquired in the re in recent times. But what he is trying to prioritize is quality. Okay. That's what I do. So they tours. they just exactly. yeah they are very aware that this might be temporary or not, or that uh, you know you have to take care of the people at home. Right. as well as the people who come from outside of course. and give a good service. Right. So that, that is their priority number one. If you were offered a Michelin star rating, okay, like some other restaurants have been offered and they turn them down and others get the star rating and they give it back. If you guys were offered a Michelin star, would you accept it? Está diciendo, a ver, es una pregunta un poquillo, ¿no? O sea, si, si no te ofrecieran <laughs> mañana una estrella Michelin, ¿qué harías con ella? Porque hay, hay muchos, hay muchos, no quieren. Que no la quieren. A ver, yo no, haré un reconocimiento siempre, lo que o sea, nunca le haría un feo, pero no creo que sea un sitio para recibir una estrella Michelin. No. Entonces, no creo que sea un debate que tenga que entrar, porque no creo que, no. que, que vaya a estar entre ellos. He doesn't think he, you know, the, the, the food or, or I guess the, the focus of their work would entitle whether he has it or not. No voy a trabajar para conseguir una estrella Michelin es. si me la dan bien, pero yo... O sea, no es mi objetivo. Right. Yeah. Su objetivo es, pues eso, hacer Quality. un buen trabajo, Quality buena calidad y, y mejorar en lo que, eh, que, en lo que hacer, hacemos. Pues en lo que Efectivamente. Estamos ahora, pues por ejemplo, me han dejado un, una cuadra en Legorreta y tenemos ahí unos cuantos bueyes nuestros, pues, pues estamos criándolos, estamos dándoles diferentes alimentaciones, pues aprender y mejorar lo que estoy dando aquí, no nada de ni estrellas ni... Ok, ni so leches. basically what he's saying right now is that they are uh getting they're experimenting with different types of animal oxes and whatnot so mm -hmm. to kind of improve a little bit what they really do well okay okay that will lead right up to my next question which is what type of animal what type of cow do you use ¿Qué what tipo type de of cow yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a veces vacas alemanas 
unas veces holandesas, otras veces de Dinamarca y otras veces nacionales. Pues nacionales pueden ser eh, tanto pues de Zamora, pues ahí están en Sanabresa, Gallegas, pues Rubia Gallega, eh, alguna simental en Toledo, tengo un sitio que se llama La Finca, que me suelen abastecer muy buenas piezas y muy a menudo. Y al final, eh, un poco lo que hacemos es ir buscando animales eh, de muy buena calidad y, y nada, y seleccionarlos mucho. Ok, so, what they do is they select very well, very carefully the type of animals that okay. they use for right. their meat. Uh -huh. So sometimes they, they uh, get European cattle, sometimes uh -huh. national cattle from Galicia, from right. Zamora, from different areas in the country. And what they want is high quality meat. Right. Okay, so that's what exactly what they're looking for. I've had a lot of people on my tours say on the BBC network that you guys used dairy cows for. Leandro. Sí. Okay. También. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very sí, sí, sí. Yeah. Al final, eh, las que vienen del norte de Europa, muchas suelen venir así, que son eh, vacas lecheras que ya no son rentables ni para dar leches, no dan ya terneros sí. y están gordas, entonces las tienen engordando un tiempo y estas vacas son muy óptimas sí. también. Es de sabor. Es el sabor. sabor. Son es pequeñitas, sabor. Yeah. muy veteadas, muy filtradas, las frisonas right. habitualmente. So, they so, yes. Right. so the, yes, they use dire cows right. sometimes, cows that they don't produce babies anymore, per right. se, uh -huh. and that they follow a specific nutrition. Right. Y luego se vuelven muy flavorosos. Por supuesto. Lo importante es que tenga buenas cualidades. No nos importa si es lechera o si es únicamente de carne. Lo importante es que sea una buena vaca de yeah, buena calidad. Así que un buen cap es lo que me gusta. Ahora, cuando comes esto con tu familia o con tus amigos, si tienes una you know, uh, a, a gathering con tus amigos y familia, cuando comes el steak y los peppers, ¿qué drink te you pair that con? Eh, Keith hace mucho no. pairing, entonces esta pregunta va un poco dirigida por el trabajo que él hace también, ¿no? A diario. ¿Tú qué bebes con este menú? Cuando tienes amigos, familia, cuando comes esto en casa? Normalmente vino tinto, ahora también hay veces que lo marías con champán, con, con chacolí, en, con sidra, una bebida local, pero a ver, lo, lo ideal es vino tinto. Okay. Of course. Okay. Because this is from yes. here. Right, and right. chocolate. And chocolate, chocolate as well. Okay. But I mean, the ideal, I think, for what made is a, a good red wine. Okay. I would say. Yes, okay, of course. And the last question when you go to Donostia or San Sebastian uh, to do pinchos, mm -hmm. what's your favorite pincho bar and your favorite pincho? This is my personal. Bueno, en... me encantan los, los hongos de Gambara. Vale, he likes the mushrooms At of Gambara, Gambara yes. bar, yeah, in the Nosti, yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, you very, very much. It Thank was you a for pleasure. Your time. Thank you so much. To finish off this video, I'm going to give you guys my review of uh, Casa Julian in Tolosa. Um, and of course, uh, Bar Dickens there, the nice uh, little drink. Um, great i mean that steak was awesome but we can't thank shabby enough for sitting down with us um and actually inviting us to the meal uh it was great we did end up having one of the uh ox steaks you know when you come visit here a lot of a lot of these places will say they're serving you ox meat but there's not that many oxes out there i believe once shabby gets his uh, operation up and going he's going to have plenty of uh ox meat available uh but those steaks are amazing I'm sure they looked great. Uh, they looked great before I ate them and they tasted even better. So thank you very much, Shabby, for that. Um, but that was a great place. Definitely worthwhile if you're here in this region, in this area, please uh, consider going to uh, Casa Julian in Tolosa. And with that said, we're off. We'll see you next time on, uh, on our adventures.